protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. Boxing King Media in association with SaveMoreMoney.com. Uh, Tony Sims, Tony, uh, you're out here with uh, Jimmy Saints. Uh, I was just saying to Jimmy, he's gone from debuting in front of a home crowd uh, to miles away in uh, Newcastle, different accent, different city. Yeah, and you know, to box in Newcastle is a great experience for him, and uh, you know, it'll be a great atmosphere in, in, in the arena on the night. And I like that what Matchroom do, it's obviously a next gen show. And they're not just showcasing the local talent, but they're bringing, you know, the, the the rest of the young talent on these away shows, and that and that gives the young kids good experience fighting up and down the country, and um, obviously uh, the prospects they've got on the show are really good prospects, and uh, I'm looking forward to Saturday night. I was saying to Jimmy if you could explain what is it about the people of Essex that get so well behind their fighters because prior to Johnny Fisher my opinion of Essex was like you know all the reality shows that you see about Essex and you obviously your old school Essex guy so you, you explain to us. Yeah I mean you know Essex is a big big county and uh, you know it's um, it's well supported in what any anyone does in Essex and it's a kind of close-knit community especially where Jimmy comes from in Brentwood and everybody kind of knows everybody and uh, and they get behind whatever they do I mean Jimmy's younger brother plays for Ipswich uh, and he's a good player and, uh, and everyone gets behind him his family he's got a great family behind him so he, they get great support definitely so and, uh, and it's Possibly pressure comes with that as well because he's obviously seen with uh, Johnny because even though he's got a big fan base, the outer circle of Essex, he gets a lot of hammer for it as well because people are expecting him to do like big things straight away. Yeah, of course, and as we were saying on his on his pro debut, you know, he uh, he sold a lot of tickets. I think he sold like 600 tickets, travelled to Wembley and um, of course the pressure's on you a little bit more than if you if you hadn't sold any. So, but that's the name of the game is dealing with the pressure. And when you get to big fights, big title fights, it's about dealing with that pressure. And obviously Jimmy's going to deal with that from a, from a young age and a, uh, early in his career. Definitely. So, um, and just moving on to uh, one of your other fighters, you know, we've seen a lot of talk of uh, the Conor Ben and Chris Eubank junior fight uh, but I, I spoke to Frank Smith earlier and I said to him one thing that I've picked up is that we're not hearing anything from Chris Eubank Jr or Wasserman uh, to kind of say that this progression because all we've seen from Wasserman recently is uh, that they're trying to push the Holland Eubank fight so does that concern you any anyway? Um, not really I think obviously both teams are in negotiations we're still in negotiations as ourselves um, so you know negotiations are going well we're a lot closer this week than we was last week, but until the um, until the contracts are signed and it, you know there's not a fight on, but I expect uh, I expect to be getting closer by next week, and um, you know I'm expecting the fight hopefully to happen. Obviously, you know you're one of the very few old school trainers left in the UK, and I mean that in in a, in a complimentary way with all your experience. Um, have you seen anything like this over the years where it took so long to just like for the situation to just to conclude? Because obviously we've seen Conor has, has been cleared to fight now, but obviously the boxing board are hanging on to this thing of like the appeal, but even that's not happening. So, uh, have you seen anything crazy like that's happened before in, in your years of boxing? Not really. No, it's probably. Uh... It's probably the craziest situation I've ever been involved in in boxing, but listen, he's clear to fight, you know, and hopefully the uh, the board, you know, will let him fight because it's hard for them not to because uh, he, he's clear by all bodies, as we know. He boxed in Florida a couple of months back, and um, so it'd be great to get the, the fight on eventually on these shores. And, um, you know, I think everybody behind the scenes is working hard to try and do that. There was this misconception as well at the time when people were saying oh, if you fight, you know, the trainer, the promoter could get into trouble, but obviously you haven't because you're still working and doing your day-to-day -day job. It's worth probably clarifying that as well. Yeah, sure. And, you know, that, that is my job. I train fighters and, uh, and that's what I do. And, uh, you know, whoever's fighting when, that's my job to do that.
I just want to get your opinion, Tony, on um, Tyson Fury. Uh, we saw recently, obviously, uh, he had his fight with Ngannou. People have got varying opinions on it. Uh, but one of the things we've seen this week, is we saw Johnny Nelson come out and said that he feels like his legs have gone. Uh, Eddie Hearns reckons his punch resistance has gone. I want to get your opinion because you've probably forgotten more than people know about boxing. So from what you assess, had you was it a bad night at the office or what, is it what people are saying? I, I, I believe it is a bad night at the office. Um, but Tyson has Tyson has had them bad nights throughout his career. I was I believe it or not, I was in the corner with him when he when he boxed John McDermott the first time and everyone yeah, and um yeah, it was a long time ago and uh, you know that he had a stinker that night and then he obviously had the return and he stopped John. So we have seen him do this before on numerous occasions and um I think we see it against Otto Wallin as well. You know, I'm not taking anything away from Otto because I know him well, but we've seen him put in some bad performances and then in his next fight, it's like he fights Wilder, do you know what I mean? He puts some unbelievable performance in. My personal opinion is I don't think he looked like he was any, any in any sort of shape than he normally is. And I know he's not like a built athlete, but he, he, look, he looked to me in terrible condition. And... Um, I don't think whether he, whether mentally he was there as well. I don't know whether he took took Ngannou lightly, maybe. But I, I don't believe that we'll see um, Tyson Fury come in like that ever again. And um, you know, I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't be thinking he, he's um, I wouldn't be thinking that he's any 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 lesser fighter than when we see him fight previously and uh, I think against Usyk he'll bring his A game and he, he's always a difficult fighter to beat when he does bring his A game. You know from your coach's perspective you, you've obviously seen this over the years where fighters literally get dismissed we've seen it with AJ recently people saying oh he's finished he's gun shy these are the kind of things you read but you know from a coach's perspective uh, if you're in AJ's corner or Tyson's corner you're reading all these sort of things you know uh, what's the coach thinking? Yeah you know he's uh it's a difficult situation for the coach because as a coach you obviously do your best to get the fighter in the best condition mentally and physically you can and uh, I don't know what his camp was like, I don't know his coach at all but to me he didn't look like he was there physically and he didn't look like he was there mentally either and you know that, that obviously weren't the Tyson Fury that we're used to but Sometimes everyone's due a bad performance and unfortunately he, he, he didn't put on a good performance against somebody that 99.9% .9 of the, the, the people before and thought he would deal with him easily. So he weren't good, but I don't believe that he'll come in in that sort of shape mentally and physically for, against Usyk. Last question I've got for you. Obviously, I, I didn't know that you was in Tyson's corner for that McDermott fight. Was that the fight where he cried in the post-fight interview? And uh, you know, what was it like in that environment and just that changing room after the fight? I'm just curious if you share a story with us. He, I, I didn't know him then. I think it was only his probably his eight, eight fight, and uh, he was he was with NSC Sports, and I was one of the main trainers of NSC Sports at the time, and. Uh, he was in the fight was in Essex near near to my home, and um, Mick Ennessy rung me and said, "Listen, can you do the corner with him? He's got a fight, John McDermott, and I don't know what happened to his trainer. I don't know whether he was sick. Or I don't know what happened. Was it, it might have been his uncle Huey? I his think. Uncle, yeah, his uncle, and maybe he was sick, and um, and it was literally on my doorstep. So I went and worked the corner that night. But you know what I found out about Tyson Fury that night was coming into the last round. Same thing again. He he weren't in great condition for that fight, and um, maybe that maybe because he I don't know what happened with his trainer, but he, he wasn't in great condition. But one thing I will say about him, I remember saying to him in the corner, "You got to go out and win this last round and give it everything." And he certainly, as tired as he was, put himself on the line uh, on that last round. And many people believe thought that he lost that fight, but. From that from that night onwards, I, I believed that he would go on to bigger and better things because he just had that fighter's art in him, and uh, and, and as we've seen on many occasions, he uh, he's been put down, got up off the floor, and won fight. So, you know, mentally and heart-wise, he's he, he's there, but physically, I think, you know, he, obviously, he weren't there last week.
Yeah, um, and this is the last thing I promise. It's interesting you said that, you know, when people think you lost a fight. For fighters, it must be nuts because I think I saw something like this with Connor, you know, when he fought that French guy. People remind you of these sort of fights throughout time. Oh, don't forget the time you lost. Fighters, don't, do they really care uh, as the careers uh, go on? No, and like you say there with, with Connor, you know, he got put down twice against the Belgium kid, then, but he had the return straight away with him and put the Belgium kid down three times in the return. So, you know, mentally and physically, you've got to be in the right place at the, uh, at the right time. And I believe Fury will be when he, when he fights Usyk. Mr Tony Sims, as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Nice Thank you. Have you ever been stranded on the side of a motorway with a broken down car? Like me, is that something that worries you? That's where Motor Breakdown Insurance comes in. If your vehicle breaks down, a trained professional will be sent out to get you back on the road. Or if this is not possible within the specified time frame to transport you to your home or to the nearest garage.